Welcome to the Maysbury Report, and today I am joined with UT Rockets women's basketball coach Trish Collip. How are you doing today? Good, how are you? I'm fine. Now, Purdue alumni, mm -hmm. you was there at the time when Glenn Robinson, Matt Painter, Quanzo Martin, you know, were dominating the Big Ten on the women's side, and your team was doing pretty good. Yeah, you know, it was a, it was a lot of fun. Uh, it was a great place to play. What about the atmosphere? Man. You know, it, it was it was a lot of fun during that time because, uh, you know, when I first started looking at Purdue, there weren't a lot of people in the stands, and, and I watched Coach Dunn grow that program. Um, but also, you know, watching what Coach Katie and all of those players were doing, it, both programs were really on the rise at that time, and there were a lot of great players in both programs, and to see the success during that time was, was a lot of fun to be a student athlete and a part of it. When did you decide to get into coaching? You know, toward the end of my college career, um, I just knew I was going to miss playing. And, you know, at that time, there was no chance to play in the United States. Um, you know, people were starting to, there were some leagues just starting up, but if you wanted to play professionally, you had to go overseas. And I really didn't have any interest in doing that. Uh, so I decided to, to get right into coaching, and it's really paid off. You know, I think coaching is the next best thing to play. How did Evansville come across? Well, you know, it's, uh, I was an assistant at Xavier at the time that that job opened up, and it was uh, a job that was an hour from my hometown. And, um, you know, I knew a lot, a lot of my classmates from high school went to school at Evansville, and uh, I knew it was a great place, and it was a wonderful place. Uh, when I had the opportunity to get offered the job, I was really thrilled. How did you turn the program around so quickly? Well, you know, actually I came in after Kathy Bennett, who had taken the program to the NCAA tournament. She did a tremendous job. And then we had graduated a lot of people that next year. And so um, when I first started out there, it was actually kind of tough. I, we lost our best player to an ACL right after the first game we played. And uh, kind of had to, you know, we graduated some people, then we had to rebuild it from there. But um, I think signing some great players like Rebecca Legan, who's on our staff, uh, she and Courtney Felke um, were a part of a class that became the most successful class in school history. And you went to UT. Did the same opportunity arise? Uh, you got the Evansville job or it went a different route? Well, you know, I, I knew the history of Toledo. Uh, you know, it doesn't take long. You walk in the arena and see all the banners, and it's pretty obvious uh, the success here uh, that's been here for a long time. Bill Finley started it. Mark Elin continued it. Um, but I think that I knew there was a great opportunity, even though the, prog the program had been through a few down years. Um, the fan support's always been outstanding. Uh, the tradition here, the, the facilities getting upgraded when I first came in. It was just an exciting time to join this program, and uh, it's been one of the best decisions I ever made. Can you take us back to your first year? Well, my first year, uh, you know, I saw the design plans. I'm so excited to get into the arena, but I really inherited a great group of people. Uh, Allie Clifton, who's now working with the Cavs as a sideline reporter. Uh, Lisa Johnson, who's a nurse here in town. Uh, Melissa Goodall, I mean, Tanika Mays. That was a great group to inherit. Uh, you know, and then to add Nama Shafir in late signing. Um, you know, that was, that was a special group to start off with. Nama ended up starting her whole career. Um, but that group was invest invested and they really wanted to win. And they were very, very coachable. We were picked last in the division and had a chance to almost win it toward the end of the season. And I really am indebted to that group because they kind of got us off the ground and helped us build what we have now. About the best year, 2010, 2011, because I used to come to a lot mm -hmm. of games that year. And mm -hmm. it was the WNIT tournament we made. And I was like, wow, we're actually mm -hmm. getting up there. What was your experience like the whole entire year? Was it like the most exciting time coaching? Well, it was. It was a, a very exciting year. We didn't lose a whole lot of games that year. Um, you know, I think the frustrating thing about that season was not winning the conference tournament. You know, we really wanted to win it. Uh, we lost, unfortunately, um, in the semifinals. But, and that was a heartbreaking two-point loss. And so when we came home, I just remember sitting with our team and saying, hey, you know, we got to get it together because even though we're not in the tournament that we had intended to be in, this is still a great opportunity. And I don't think we even realized at the time how ex how much excitement was ahead of us. Uh, but to be Del Delaware to start with, who had Elena Deladon, um, then Auburn, Alabama, Syracuse, UNC Charlotte, and then to host USC. But to get to host all of those games, I think says a lot about our administration, that they're willing to, 
to support us in that way. Not a lot of teams have that kind of support. But then to see the fan base grow to two sellouts at the end of the season was, was just a lot of fun. That's probably one of the best memories uh, coaching to date was coaching during that run because of how much excitement was around it. And just to see the confidence that our team kept building uh, throughout the tournament and even to win our last game. I mean, there's two teams, two women's teams in the country that get to win their last game. The WNIT winner and the NCAA winner. And we, we got to enjoy what that felt like. You got to beat Michael Cooper. <laughs> Because they had to be great to you know, win a championship against a, a player that had an integral part in the Showtime Lakers. Mm -hmm. Do you brag about that to this day? Like, you know, no, I, they, no, but know. I will say it was a surreal <laughs> moment. Uh, I, grew up a Laker, or I grew up a Celtics fan, and so, but I watched the Lakers-Celtics series, and uh, obviously you know, my number in college was 33. I loved Larry Bird growing up, but I watched the Lakers a lot, and... You know, it was it was kind of surreal to look down at the other bench and see Michael Cooper sitting there. Uh, that was a fun moment in coaching, and uh, obviously he has had a tremendous career as a player, as a coach, and in the WNBA now. Uh, I have a lot of respect for him. Um, the past few years, you know, we're still you know maintaining. Uh, how has that experience been, far since the Poem Championship in two thousand and eleven? Well, you know, I think last year we were just a really young team. You know, we had one senior that was playing, two juniors, and the rest was underclassmen. And we did not play an easy schedule non-conference-wise. We had some highs. You know, the weekend that we beat Arizona and Virginia was a highlight. And then we had some lows, uh, some games that we wish we could have back. You know, we had a, a, a late or a, a one-possession game up at Buffalo that I wish we could have pulled out, uh, a loss at Northern Illinois I wish we could have pulled out. But all in all, I'm really proud of the fact that this team found a way to get in the NIT and then to win a game against a very strong right state team uh, and then eventually lose to Michigan. But, you know, I, I'm proud of the way they progressed. You talk about the recruiting class. It's pretty strong. Um, Kayla McIntyre. Mm -hmm. And you're also good at scouting international talent, which mm -hmm. make you know, immediate impacts. Mm -hmm. How do you approach a recruiting? What do you look for? Well, first of all, we look in a six-hour radius. Who can help us that's within a drivable range? Because obviously that helps our attendance, too, to have, have uh, kids from the region that our fans know and have watched their careers. So we start regionally, and then if we aren't able to find what we need regionally, then we'll go anywhere. And we've been very fortunate in the past to sign some international players. Nama Shafir had a great career here. Um, Inma Thanagara had a great career here. And, and, you know, J.N. Bravo Harriet was named Rookie of the Year from England. So we've been very fortunate with some international kids. But also, you know, I'm, I am excited about this incoming class. Kayla McIntyre has been to four straight uh, high school state championship games. Um, and then also uh, Haley Prince, her high school team at Tip City only lost one game this year. And, you know, she's a great combo guard. And then Sarah St. Fort from Quebec, Canada is one of the best athletes coming out of Canada this year. So this, this group is going to be a lot of fun to coach. What's your favorite part about being head coach of the Toledo Rockets? <laughs> Probably just uh, coaching here is a lot of fun because our fans. Our fans make this particular place just unreal. And I work for, I think, one of the best athletic directors around. I mean, Mike O'Brien and Kelly Andrews, our SWA, they understand what it takes to be successful, and they support us in every way they can. Um, it's not just lip service that women's basketball matters here. And that, that, that makes me feel good every day I go out to represent our program, but also to our players and then the fans, they just make it enjoyable. It's a great home court advantage, uh, but as we tell our players, that's also 4,000 people in the stands that could be on your reference list when you're done. Okay, and to make it fun, this is the last question, you're going to be okay. off the hot seat. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's, it's fight week. Uh -huh. All right, who are going to pick? Mayweather or Pacquiao? You know, I'm, I'm not studied it enough. Uh, I have an uncle who loved boxing growing up, and I remember sitting in his living room watching Sugar Ray Leonard and all those fights, but I haven't followed it enough to really, uh, to really be one way or the other lopsided. And now the ironic thing is I'm going out to Vegas, but after the fight, <laughs> which is probably a good thing, uh, I'm going out to watch the national team practice, which I'm excited about. Uh, okay. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm neutral when it comes to the fight. Okay, we just want to see a good fight. We'll I just want to see a good fight. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for coming, and we'll see you guys next time.